eight jigs I have built for my workshop using the match fit dovetail clamp system. That's from Microjig. And no, they do not pay me anything for this discussion or for this presentation. Hola woodworkers, Paul Carson here, small workshop guy. Quick shop update, a little discussion of some things I'm doing uh, in my small workshop in between major projects. I just finished my Samurai Carpenter workbench. I'm going to do some deck furniture, uh, basically a big comfortable chair and a footstool to go with it. Uh, next, uh, but before I got started with that, I thought I would uh, build some new jigs for my workshop. All of these jigs are going to use this match fit uh, dovetail clamp system. The beauty of this is you can make it really low profile. For example, here is a um, tall fence for my really inexpensive WEN band saw. So in order to put that fence on there, all of these match fits are based on cutting your own dovetail grooves into your jigs or work pieces. Those dovetail grooves are cut by using a 14 degree dovetail router bit. It's a uh, half an inch on the bottom and a quarter of an inch at the top. And so it creates a groove like this. That replaces buying all sorts of T-track. So you use that common groove for all of your jigs and then these clamps are designed to fit into that groove. So uh, pretty neat system. A lot of flexibility to it. Here's the eight things that I have done. Let me put this away. This uh, When you do the groove, you do it three-eighths of an inch deep into the workpiece. First jig is a cutting guide designed for a router with the dovetail bit. As you can see, the clamps are completely underneath and nothing is above the surface to get in the way of the router. So that's the concept. Probably the first jig you want to do using that system is a jig to help you do these dovetails. They talk about in their instructions when you're going to do these grooves that you cut them first with a one quarter inch bit in your router and you plunge that I think uh, three sixteenths deep. The whole purpose of that is to make it easier for your router with the dovetail bit to work. Uh, you're not going to stretch your router as much. However, I found that to be very difficult to first cut the nice groove even with a nice fence of some sort uh, using the one quarter inch router bit and then coming right back and perfectly cutting that same groove now using your dovetail bit 3 8 deep. I did fortunately uh, see in the instructions that if I had a powerful enough router that I didn't need to do that line first with the quarter inch and that made it a lot easier. The fact is I had done a drill press table using the preliminary slot first and then trying to match that with my dovetail slot. Now, I gotta tell you a lot of it didn't fit properly. I had difficulty sliding these clamps. Now when I went to the single cut obviously of going one time uh, through the workpiece with my dovetail bit with my larger more powerful router things come out beautifully and everything pretty well slides. Occasionally you have to do a little bit of trimming with a chisel or a little filing if there's a little uh, point where your clamps get hung up but generally it comes out very well so I kind of recommend this that you have a big router for doing this or you have a lot of skill by doing the line twice, once with a quarter inch, once with another simple one, which is a guide to, for my two different um, circular saws. This concept is not new at all. These are just the slot, dovetail slot. I fortified it with some screws and stuff because once you cut that slot all the way through, you cut these two pieces separate. And so then I don't have a lot of surface level here for these to hang on to this guide. So I cut the guide and these are separate but then I fortified it with a lot of screws. Another jig 
that I did using this system is a simple zero clearance uh, plate that I can put on my bandsaw. The way it works is I've got the slot in the back, the dovetail slot, and so when I need to get that on my bandsaw table and keep it secure instead of just relying on two-sided tape or something, uh, I've, there's a way that this then attaches and, and tightens up against my bandsaw table. A fourth device is a tall fence for my bandsaw. And I've got some pictures of all of these in place. So I just using the uh, fence that comes with the bandsaw, I need it to be taller. So this goes down in there and then closes up on that fence. Concept is to have no clamps in the way of the cutting area. Another jig, and I actually have two like this. This is a board straightener uh, for my table saw. So I've got a perfectly straight edge up here that I've made very, very careful with straight edge. The clamping system then for attaching another board is I can attach the one that I want to straighten uh, by using these dovetail clamps and then put my board in here, it overhangs the blade, run this against the side, I'm going to get a nice straight cut on one edge, then turn it around. Just slide the clamps in the dovetail slots, and then when you don't need them, pull them out and use them on other jigs. I'm actually going to put another top on top of this using the same dovetail clamps, and that will be one that will shift back and forth, and that will allow this to also function as a uh, tapering uh, jig. Not only that, this can work as a not only a straightener and a tapering jig, but as my tall fence for my uh, table saw. Easy peasy, a two-in-one jig for your table saw. I also have a much larger tall fence and uh, that can also serve as a straightening board. So if I want it to be uh, a tall fence, then I turn it around, put it over the, the saw stop fence, and attach it with the clips. And I got various places. If I want it to be a straight jig, then I can flip it over, uh, figure out which one's supposed to go against the fence, and then use this as a large straightening device. Sitting up with the clamps on the back on the fence, it's a tall fence. Put the clamps on the slots with it laying down, and it's a board straightener. I, the smaller one doesn't always work if I have a longer piece that needs to be straightened out on one edge. All right, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, number seven or eight or whatever, I don't know, <coughs> is a drill press table. So what I did there was I have a number of these dovetail grooves. So I just had two pieces, and I have another video on this, but I redid it after I did that video where I'm doing this single cut with the dovetail uh, bit. Uh, because the one where I tried to cut it straight with a quarter inch bit first and then come back with a dovetail bit, I'd get the things off a little bit and then my clamps were having a difficulty moving. So I decided to take the time to redo it, do it with a single cut with a larger, more powerful uh, router and just with the dovetail with no preliminary slot and now everything slides for me. So, uh, I'm very happy with this. I've got it set up so it, it goes around the uh, pole or the uh, beam in the back of the drill press. I have this side cut out to accommodate the handle for raising and lowering. And then I have done an offset piece here where the drill bit and the drill press will come down into this corner. So when that becomes worn out and, and no longer supporting my work pieces, I can just pull this out, turn it around, put it back in so I can do that four times. I'm probably not going to go all the way through that ever. I might. 
but if I do, I turn it over. So I've got eight places on this one, and then I've got ten more of them already cut out to the same 4x4 four four size. So the beauty here is on the drill press table, I can set my fence. I'm going to modify this to give myself longer slots, uh, but then I can I put slots on the bottom as well, so I can I can secure it to my drill press table. Very easy to use the dovetail clamp to secure a workpiece when you're trying to do your drilling. As you can see here, you can go from a variety of different ways. And here you can see how to use a dovetail clamp to secure the um, work table to the drill press. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a new uh, crosscut sled. Uh, just designed for my regular blade, not my dado blade. I'm going to take my current um, crosscut sled and just go ahead and use it for a dado stack. But um, I'm going to create a new crosscut sled that's going to utilize these clamps and uh, to be able to hold work pieces and to set up stop blocks. So I'm kind of excited about that. When I'm done with it, I'll share it with you. All right, well, that's my uh, micro jig match fit dovetail clamps. They're not inexpensive to get uh, three devices of this type for holding things and which fit into those dovetails and to get two of the clamps and to get a little measuring device and a couple other little things. That was $90. Uh, it's called the uh, match fit dovetail clamp pro. Then I uh, am going to use this with enough different jigs that I wanted to have extra clamps around. I did not necessarily want to take them off of another jig just to grab them for a, a quick purpose. So I bought two more. $45 per pair. I don't know if you can get them cheaper somewhere else. But for me, it's a long-term thing. Uh, that's a cost that I can amortize over a number of jigs. And uh, I really like the way they perform. All right, well, that's uh, what's going on in the Small Workshop Guys Small Workshop. I hope uh, this educates you a little bit more of, of the potential for using these clamps. Obviously, what you're doing is you're going to be able to do a lot of things just by drilling that dovetail slot into a jig or a workpiece and then using these and replacing the need for T-tracks of all sorts of various sizes. And that's the problem. You end up buying different T-tracks and then other clamps don't fit in them. Hope you got some good ideas. Small Workshop Guy signing off and heading to the hardwood store for my next project.